Hello, Internet. My name is Josh, this is the Whiskey Jug, and today I am reviewing the Talisker Storm. Now, if you'll notice, instead of doing a traditional review where you're, you know, an unboxing or unwrapping review, I'm doing a last glass review. And that's because on the site, uh, whiskeyjug.com, I've already had a formal review of this from when I first opened it in the first couple glasses, which the link is below if uh, you're interested in checking that out. But um, I decided to do this to kind of mix things up a little bit and actually check... Uh, do this as a way to take a look at the whiskey after it's had time to oxidize a little over time, pick up like how it's changed because the whiskey can change a little bit on you from the time you open it to the time you finish it unless uh, you're adding in some of the, the preserving like argon gas or something like that to it and uh, so doing things just a little bit different, I'm doing a last glass review of uh, this one. So now. Talisker Storm, this is uh, an NAS, a non-age statement whiskey from Talisker, and you know, I really liked it. I really, really did. Um, I originally scored it a 91, so, and uh, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I love Talisker as is. I think that, you know, some of the stuff's a little, maybe a little overpriced, so that's kind of the just the nature of the industry at the moment, but... Uh, it had out of the bottle. It had a lot of those really good briny notes, a lot of the really good iodine and smoked meat, and all of those wonderful notes that you get from like a you know a really peaty uh, whiskey, like an Isla whiskey, something like from Laphroaig or anything like that. And uh, the Talisker Storm, being an island whiskey, it actually it still has a lot of those same characters. But the thing I've always really really liked about Talisker is the amount of salt, brine, iodine. Those kind of you know sea notes that you get into there, some of the seaweed that they, they that you get out of the the peat that they use, it's really really fantastic. It comes across as a little bit more of a velvety smokiness, um, and this one was no real different when it came out. You know, there's a lot of really good the, uh, a lot of those notes in there. So enough rambling about it. Let's get on to see what's happening with with it here in the last glass. In there. It still has a lot of those nice briny notes, a lot of the really good um, salty notes, a lot of the smoky notes. But here's something I've found. Like, as I've been slowly going through this bottle over the last couple of months, I've noticed something, and that's that, you know, and, and this happens with a lot of your Isla whiskeys if you don't use a wine preserver or something, is that those peaty notes, those smoky notes, they tend to dissipate rather quickly compared to uh, the rest of the notes in there. And it, over time, it'll allow the sweeter notes to come a bit higher. And in this one, it's the same story. You know, the caramel notes, the vanilla notes, um, some of those citrus peel notes, things like that have all elevated up. The vanilla and the caramel especially have come a lot higher on the nose than they were before. Still fantastic to smell. Um, some of that butterscotch pudding that I was getting in it from uh, when I first opened it up, still there, still very prevalent, but it's uh, it's changed quite a bit. Those, those sweet notes are a lot, lot higher, and it's but it's still very pleasant to smell. But that might help. That uh, might hurt its end score. Let's see how it tastes. Still some of that smoky caramel in there. Um, orange zest still comes through a little bit. So some of those citrusy notes. Um, the caramel is very Werther's original. If you ever had those, if you ever had the grandpa that always had the pocket full of those little golden nuggets of deliciousness, that's what it reminds me a lot of, the butterscotch notes. Those, those Werther, or sorry, not butterscotch, caramel notes remind me of those Werther's originals. I really love those. And so every time I get a whiskey that has kind of that, that type of caramel in it, immediately makes me think of my grandpa and uh, just, you know, kind of takes me back a little bit. It's, I love it. It's one of those things. Um, you can stop rambling and just taste a little more. I miss that, that grippy brininess that was there in the beginning. I miss really those huge C notes that have kind of 
gone down a couple notches and that caramel, that vanilla, they've dug a lot deeper into it over time. They've also really made a big impact on the nose and on the palate and on the finish too. So there were a lot, there was a lot more peat on the finish originally. There was a lot more smoke and brine that came up and it really kicked up, but that's really gone down to the end of the finish. It's really, you know, the smoke of the branch is kind of coming through now. It takes a lot more for that peat to really work in there. You don't really get any of those notes quite as much in the finish as they were before. They were really powerful originally. And still some of that smoky grain in there. Um, still some of those good woody notes. But it has, uh, it's changed quite a bit. So, um... Thinking about this and thinking about the notes that I've kept along the way while drinking this whiskey, uh, I actually have to knock it down a point, to be honest. I originally scored it a 91, but after retasting it and uh, looking through you know, the notes that I've kept along the way, I'm very sorry, Talisker Storm, but I'm going to have to drop it down to a new end score of a 90. Which is still not a bad score, not by any means. It uh, still puts it in, I mean, obviously 90, so it's still a very good score. Puts it up into that uh, range of... Can you tell this is my first video in a while? Yeah, that's, that's terrible placement. And even though I still really, really like it, I did have to drop it a point, but... Yeah, it's still a good whiskey, I mean... Here's the problem with the, the no age statement thing that people are getting really, really hung up about. Um, it You can have some really good whiskey that's young. I mean, look at Kilholman. They put out some absolutely stellar stuff, and it's really young, like four or five years. Sometimes it's a four and five year. They uh, vat together before bottling. It's really, really good whiskey, though. And then you've got some other stuff, some really, really old stuff. I had some old... Uh, Bowmore 21 just recently that, to be honest, I didn't like at all. I would honestly take their their small batch or even just the regular uh, Bowmore Darkest over the 21 that I had recently any day. I don't even take any just of the, the just slightly older Bowmores or any of the signatory or uh, exclusive casks, younger Bowmores even. I had a like an eight-year Bowmore, sign, uh, I think it was exclusive cast that was fantastic and completely blew away this the, the 21 that I was, had the other night and that's that's the whole point um, it's not about a number on a bottle it's not about how many times it's gone around the sun it's how it's matured and how it tastes how it's been put together and this is one that I think this is a no age statement done really well in my opinion this is something that I really really enjoy and uh, other than the uh, topper that broke off the second I tried to open it, Freaking hate these things, but uh, that's the only real. I mean, that that's probably the biggest defect in this bottle is this. But you know, it's empty now, so who cares? And yeah, that's it. I'm Josh. This is the whiskey jug. This has been the review of the Talisker Storm, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Cheers.